Hey there, YouTubers. Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun. I have a quick question from uh, one of our viewers, and he's got a database um, of aquarium stuff here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up his uh, user form that he uses. As you can see, it's pretty big. And one of his problems is that whenever he selects this category drop down list, if he selects equipment, he needs certain things to disappear. If he selects food, he needs other certain things to disappear. And livestock, again, something else needs to disappear. So let's just work through that really quickly. That's step one. We may not get through all three of the problems in this particular video. But let's hit uh, F5 or we can run this user form. Just see what happens currently. Oops. Alright, F5, here we are. So if equipment is selected, he needs it to hide certain fields. So let's find out what those are. Okay, so we're looking here at my email. So if equipment is selected, he needs the species name, common name, food brand, and food type. Combo box is hidden. So let's pull those up really quick. Let's see, species name, this one, common name, food brand and food type. So these four need to be hidden if he selects equipment. So that's easy enough. We'll go ahead and go back into the Visual Basic menu here. And we're going to double click on the uh, CBO category, his combo box right here. Double click on that. And it looks like he's already uh, messed with the change event here. Let's go ahead and clear that out for now. Um, what we want to do is if me.cbo category equals, so if it equals equipment, then uh, me.cbo, I really don't know what the names of these are, let's see, okay, it's probably this one and the food brand and food type and so let's just do that. That one dot visible equals false. So if the dot visible equals false, then that means that it's invisible, right? And if the FB equal or dot visible equals false, also me dot CBO FT dot visible dot viz equals false. Okay, now there's a fourth one in there, but just for just for example sake. So else if me dot cbo cat equals what was the other one? Food. Uh, if it's livestock, then and then something else. All right, so I think you understand. And then finally else. Then uh, do the uh, food category and blank out whatever you want. But that's how to do that step. You just say uh, you just say dot visible equals false. So let's go ahead and try that. Hit a five. So we'll select food. Nothing happens, right? Uh, now one thing that I forgot to tell you is once I hit equipment you see that those things went invisible and I didn't do the labels and also when I click on here it's not going to come back why because you have to put on the uh, I guess you'll have to say that those things dot visible equals true if you click here or if you click here that's the price you pay for being uh, picky about what is visible or not but it's really not a big deal I'll show you um, double click on there and then just on both the other scenarios, I'm going to copy and paste this at the bottom and make sure that these are all true. A little tedious, but it's not a big deal. And then, uh, of course, the same with the last category. It could get really horrific if you had like a million different things that you wanted to do with each category. Let's hit F5. Alright, so you see that a food is fine. If I go to equipment, there goes those combo boxes. But now we told it that whenever you click on food or livestock, to bring them back. 
So we'll go to livestock. All right, so that's his first issue solved. That's how to do that. Second thing is he says he needs a list box to replace the fe uh, the species and common names combo boxes so they will be synced correctly. Uh, basically, so they'll they'll be right next to each other. So you could use a a combo box for this. He's talking about uh, this species name, and then the I think the common name. He wants it to automatically select that. So if they were in a list box form, then it would be easier. So let's see here. So yeah, if he clicked on this one, then it should say this. If he clicked on, let's say, the next third one down, it should say this for the common name. He wants to combine those two things. So you may want to watch one of my videos on uh, doing a list box. I don't know how much time we have to get into that right now. Looks like he's already got started on one, really. Let's see. Let's see what he did. I'm going to scooch this around. Yeah, let's see. Well, it looks to me like he's already got a list box going on here. Maybe he just doesn't know how to utilize whatever is selected. So this is LB names, list box names. Let's go ahead and make that be visible. And we'll just shove it right there. I know it's kind of in the way. Let's see, I'll scooch it down a little. Um, this is just to show you how to get the value out of that. So we're going to say it's called LB Names. So let's double click on this. Oops, double click on it. So on the, double, the LB Names click event, we're going to put whatever they clicked in the various um, uh, combo boxes. So me dot lb names dot value. That's easy. That's what's ever in the first column. Let's see. Me dot combo box. Let's see. Me dot cbo uh, cav is a category. Let's do. No, what is that called? Uh, species name. That's C B O S P E, and this was C B O C O M. All right, so yeah, C B O S P E for species name <coughs> equals the list box dot value. That's always column one. It's just a value. So that's easy. When you start using column two, it gets a little trickier. Me dot cbo uh, common name equals me dot lb names, and then uh, let's see, me dot lb names dot list. Oh boy, it's been a while since I've done this, hasn't it? Let's see. Uh, I should really make like a cheat sheet with some notes for myself. Let's do a dot list and then me dot lb names dot list index that gives away whatever um, particular row we're on, comma one. Why are we using column one? Wouldn't we use the second column? No, it's actually. Uh, column zero is what they consider the first one, and then one is considered column two, and so on. So it's all, it's kind of bass backwards, but whatever. So we want the list from the LB names list box thing, and then the row we want is <coughs> me dot LB names dot list index. So whichever one is selected, which also goes from zero to the end instead of one until the last number. So it's just weird. Let's see how that works. Hit a five. All right, so we got our oh well, whoops, we've got to make that list box visible. So click on that, go down here to the bottom, visible. Double click until it's true. So hit F5, and now it's true. So I'm going to click on this one, and it filled in the the dot value went here to this combo box, and the column two thing went over here. So that's pretty sweet. Now we can of course make more room and, and make that bigger and everything if we wanted to. 
and we can even remove these two combo boxes if we just want to start using this list box and then whenever we you know select anyway his third problem was uh, that he's having a hard time using this first uh, previous next record last record type of thing so let's see if we can tweak that first thing I want to do is always know what the last record is so record blah of blah so let's get that let's see here scooch down here well my scroll bar doesn't work on there so here this one's called TB record number so uh, Double click on the background whenever the whenever the user form initial well, I want the user form initialize. Here we are. So I've put X equals blah blah blah. You could put L row or last row or whatever you want. Here's our last row code for the purchases sheet right here. So you see that it's gonna be ten. And really, that's row 10. There's um, 10 minus 1 records because there's only 9 records because there's a header line. So you need to have find the last row and then subtract 1, and that's how many records you have. Do to do to do. Let's go back here. Okay. So we have L row. Let's hit F8. User form initialized. So L row is 10. And then let's just put minus 1 right here so that L row is actually going to tell us the number of the records. In fact, let's just say num records. So we know that's exactly what that means. Number of records is 9. So we say me dot tb record number equals num records. So that that little box is filled with the the total number of records that we have is now 9. All right. Current row is one. I don't know why we need to know that. Let's see. What is the current row? I don't know. It depends. We could have it start at row one. Yeah, that's fine. Current row is one. And uh, I'm going to hit a five just to show you that it put nine right there. Then if you want this text box to say one of nine and start at the first record, or not row one, but record one, then uh, you can, in fact, you could even just put click there and type the number one as the caption of there and have it always start with the number one if you wanted to that way if f5 and it always says one right there at the beginning then when you click uh, next or if you click on previous uh, it'll do it'll follow along and then if you want to start on row one all the time or I mean record one of nine so you know that that's going to be on uh, row two um, let's see here. You could always just add uh, one to that number to see what row you need to reference. So if if you want to do record one, you in VBA you say this number plus one, which we know is two, and then that's the row. So you start taking the auto. Let's see, category is equipment from row 2 and column 2 and so it's a equipment right there the order date from row 2 uh, so let's let's just do that let's we could even have it invisible let's put a little label right down here um, that's not a label yeah it is put a label right down here and we'll whoops Oh, where's my stinking toolbox? Okay, I just want my pointer here. Alright, I want this to be blanked out. I want to name it LBL um, row number. We want to know what row number we need to be on. So, uh, whenever this cell is changed, and let's give this a real name, TB starting row okay so let's do a thing whenever this is changed uh, me dot LBL the label for the row number equals me dot TB starting row plus one the row is always going to be this the uh, let's just be starting record 
Let me change that over there. Starting record. So yeah, the row number is always going to be the starting record plus one. So and then just make this, um, make the category and order date and all this stuff reference based off of whatever row number that label is on. And we'll go more into that if anybody needs more details. Thanks for watching. This is Dan Strong with the Excel VBS Fund. God bless.